Well, sadly to say, I got it wrong. Shopware might not be a very good option if you want to start your own e-commerce business. And in this video, we're going to take a look at why that is and also potentially an alternative. And at the end of the video, if you stick around, I'll be revealing which one I'd love more than shopware. So if you're going to love this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, give it a big thumbs up and let's get on with the video. So the first thing is, why isn't Shopware a good e-commerce platform? Well, it's not the fact that I disagreed with its architecture or the REST API. It could have been GraphQL, a little bit better. But none of these things really determine it. A platform is made by people, folks. And if the people behind the platform cannot be bothered to truly help, then I can't promote that product anymore or say that it's a really good option. So basically, I created a video a while ago talking about some of the best e-commerce options and I love the open community. I love the fact that e-commerce has opened up its doors, its code is open, thousands of hours worth of code available for free. And also that thinking power that they have. Now, my major concern here is that I actually told you wrong. I told you that uh, shopware was a good option. Now, when I look at its architecture, when I look at it from a development perspective, when I look at it from an intrinsic, sort of my basic moral guidance, Shopware is a really great product. And even the guy that I spoke to, I spoke to a gentleman who worked for an agency. And this agency was partnered with Shopware. Now, unfortunately, what he told me was not something that I like to hear and I have to redact things when I hear them. I don't want to mislead my community. So shopware, if you're willing to roll your sleeves up a lot, you will be okay. But the fact is that they had a lot of tooling that was missing that I really wished was in there, like bulk updating products or changing things. And apparently this is what spurred me to make this video was the fact that, well, here's the fact. He said to me that Shopware would bill this company if it wasn't under their support program. Support, support, support your people. People are contributing to the Shopware platform and their answer was, if it's not on our charter of support, 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 it's your product, um, then they would give you a, a very high billing price for the support they were going to offer. That is ridiculous. And I'm not going to support any platform, even if it is an open platform, with a company behind it where you would go to get some support. And in reality, what you get is a pile of dog mess. And literally, he did say that in the chat. I can't say the actual word that he said, but dog, you know, you get it. Right? And he said the platform is totally not what we expected. And it wasn't just the platform. There, there were some good things about the platform. The front end runs incredibly fast and other things, you know, it runs incredibly fast. It works incredibly well when it's working. But even then, like bulk updating products, they were like export it out into an Excel spreadsheet and then re-import the products again. And things of that nature, instead of actually trying to, I mean, I'm pretty sure I could do that in code fairly simplistically. It's a a database with a table in it called products. And I would write a piece of code that would allow you to bulk update a set of products. I mean, that isn't terribly difficult. And the back end is decoupled to so the front end. And you could even just feed the API in from one to the other. Anyway, I would know how to approach that already in my mind. The architecture is good, you know, and my core programming principles are in place with that particular platform. But what's so frustrating is, is hearing that and, and hearing the fact that this company is more interested in charging you for support of its own platform. I mean, you just hear that laugh in me. <laughs> even though they're partnered, even though they're already paying a bill, that's the point, they're already paying for support, that they have a set rules of things of what they want to support. And if you slightly go 
a little bit out of their boundaries, they will charge you for it. It's like when we find the right platform with the right sort of architecture, it's the company that screws up. It's like you can never really truly find the most perfect e-commerce platform. And maybe that's what we're searching for, but it's ridiculous. I've never heard anything like this. And so I'm not going to promote Shopware, even though I love its interface, I love its architecture. The company itself has really let itself down. This is one of the things that kind of frustrates me with the open community is the fact that with the open community, they give a product for free. And then they say, well, be thankful for that and never ask any questions. It's like, no, the support you're asking people to pay for, that really is the product that you're selling. And if your support is lax, it doesn't matter how free and open your little society is and your program, you need to be responsible and you need to act responsibly when dealing with people and support. All right, you've given us a free product, great but so have many other people. Magento is a free product, for example. And it's an open product. And it's got lots of open plugins and it's got lots of closed source plugins, but it doesn't really matter. It's the support behind those plugins that really adds value to people's businesses and ultimately into the e-commerce space or any space that it touches. So this attitude in them is, is quite wrong. And then whenever you try to apply any sort of standards, which is what Google tried to do recently, onto the open community and say, look, you need to really adhere to a standard. You know, we can't just keep allowing software to behave this way or have this many security bugs. Uh, well, well, the reality is that uh, when they tried that, they were met with vehement hatred, shall we say. So what I'm trying to really get at here with the shopware thing and, and so forth is when you're trying to apply standards to, to these types of people, they may resent it because they kind of have their own view on how they should support a product. And the reality is that I don't really want to recommend a product, no matter how good it is. I mean, I like its interface. I like some of the features there. It's missing quite a few features that I wasn't expecting, like bulk updating products, which I thought with that architecture would be actually very relative. What I would do is I create a little backend system that lets you update multiple products. In fact, you've already got most of the user interface there. I would pass it to an endpoint called update products, plural. And then I would actually use the product API for each one of those asynchronously, right? So that I'm not duplicating code where I don't need it to be. I can just use what's already there. That's why I like the architecture. But the reality is that I'm not prepared to promote a product where the people who are even making the product are giving unsatisfactory answers or prepared to live with a subset of features that should be in every e-commerce platform in the world that's dedicated to the e-commerce space. I mean, really. And it doesn't feel like uh, they're behaving responsibly here. It feels like they're shrugging their shoulders. And whenever that happens, even though the product I do think could be really great and could be a lot better, the service and the support you supply is part of the product. And if you don't really care about that and you're the core team, I mean, this is a core feature, bulk updating products. You know how many products need updating? Right, And I should be able to update them through a spreadsheet because a lot of these people need spreadsheets or I should be able to update it on the system. Right, I should be able to do those things. That's pretty standard. If you can't even offer that feature with the architecture that you've got, then I think that that's just being lazy. And you know, that is why. So what are the options that we can sort of look at? Well, the options that we can look at could be something like open cart. OpenCart is running a lot of stores, uh, pretty much almost the same as I think Shopware potentially. Now, OpenCart does have a RESTful API. It does have a nice looking back end. And ultimately, we're, we're really interested in the e-commerce space, making sure that the front end can be decoupled. So as long as it's got an API on it, then OpenCart is actually uh, pretty good. But since we're on the idea of paying for support and going a bit more proprietary here, let's not just ignore that there are other solutions. The main one is Shopify. Now, even though when I say Shopify, there's something that makes me go, oh no, 
But in reality, it's a great product. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that I'm a Linux guy. I love open. I love code. I love getting messy with that code. But however, you know, Shopify is a good platform. It will let you extend it from a developer's perspective. It lets you create apps that can hook into it. And also it lets you, you know, create those plugins and create backends and so forth. They call them apps. So you can hook into the functionality, which is fantastic. That's exactly what you want. I mean, whether you choose these open technologies, so for example, um, Magento or Shopware or OpenCart, I won't mention Shopware again. Whatever it is, you're going to have to roll your sleeves up and learn it, but you can't modify the core. That's what I mean. If the core team isn't going to be bothered to do something, then I'm like, no to that core. The core is not necessarily the technology, but the team behind it. And so it, it kind of goes the same way for, for example, uh, for example, with the open community, the core of that team needs to deliver. Now, Shopify has a proprietary technology that it's selling. Now, one thing this does give it an edge on is it can't keep not satisfying customers and saying, well, we just gave you a free product. Shut your mouth and enjoy it. So I can also promote not only the open community, but, you know, a lot of people. I'm listening to you guys. I'm listening to your comments. I'm reading your comments and I'm commenting on your comments. Uh, many people are like, where the hell is Shopify? Now, for the most part, for me as a developer, if I was going to go into these companies, none of them are using Shopify, right? Not from Speedo International, the Pentland brands, uh, you've got pharmaceutical companies, you've got uh, many other companies, you've got agencies dedicated to platforms. And very rarely will, I, I've not been to a company yet that's used Shopify on a, on a seriously commercial level. And that's usually because maybe developers are in my mindset, but also there are other financial reasons and incentives to not go with Shopify. But you did mention it, and to be fair, with Shopify, you can create apps that hook into the functionality. Now, if I'm being truthful with the core of Magento or PrestaShop or Shop, Shopware or whatever, that's the last time I mentioned that one, you can't actually modify the core right that's why the core team has to be responsible because i don't want to go in there and create a boot product feature and then it gets wiped out by the core updates which in this case because the architecture is pretty good in shopware you know i could do that but the whole point is i shouldn't have to do that core feature should be written in the core well it's the same thing right Shopify are selling a product. So you don't see this attitude with the open community that you see so much in proprietary. Now you can see it in proprietary, but they usually don't get very big and usually people get fed up with them and get, have high opinions and high expectations when you're charging for your product on a monthly basis like Shopify. So the, the price factor is creating some sort of pressure on that company to say, are you delivering a good product, right? And are you listening to us? And so Shopify does allow you from a developer perspective to create apps, plugins, hooks, and so forth. And, you know, there's only really that small financial incentive, in which case it doesn't really matter what platform you choose, they're all gonna need hosting. And the hosting is kind of built into the pricing of Shopify. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. You can see some of the experiences I've had, some very passionate things that I've had to talk about in this space, because I love the e-commerce space. There will be a product out there that will hopefully will address a lot of the issues that we face today. Be more real time, be more reactive, because e-commerce is more real time, it is more reactive, it is more in front of you. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, Give it a share as well if you really feel like it. And there is a newsletter. Down below is the link to the newsletter. It's my website, avalex.co.uk. Go ahead and join the newsletter and we're gonna grow and build platforms together. You know why? Because I see these problems. I see these problems, right? In the e-commerce space, we're not growing and developing at the same time. Let's do it real time with Avalex.